This looks like work, doesn't it? <laughs> and it is, it is. I'm doing a road to Jerusalem with some of my orchids because even though I have no news about my Floralia order, um, I am expecting five more Rapiculus Lelias, and I want these white pots for them. That is assuming they are going to fit in there, which I, in a way I hope. But, you know, having said all that, I'm just going to prepare anyway. I have no news about what's coming, when it's coming. I, I don't know, but I have to do my part at this end so that when they do arrive, if they arrive, I'm ready. In the meantime, Welcome back everybody, thank you so much for coming here. And I just want to tell you that it's going to be, today we're going to look at the Paphiopedlum spicerianum seedling that I got from Großrechner Orchideen quite some time ago. It is now pot bound. It's going to go into a bigger pot. Not because it needs it, but I need the pot. Asconopsis Irene Dobskins, which I didn't order, was a mistake by Orchid Garden. Finally, finally coming onto her own, not quite pot bound yet after two years, which is astounding. But she's going in a bigger pot anyway, because now at least she's growing properly. The damage you see here is from moth larva from last year, which, by the way, this year I do not have. It took out a lot of my dendrobium leaves, but this year I have that Gloriosa lily, and the moths have been having a great time chomping away on that salad there. So I enjoyed the blooms, now there's foliage, and now the moth larvae are having a great time there. And they're staying off my orchids, so win-win for nature and for me. This is the rattlesnake orchid, but the Osteocladus spathylofera. This one, I need the pot. Finally, my Harpophila is ready, ready to move into her already allocated pot. It's been a while, but I was waiting for some new ceramis, so New roots are growing. Let's get a move on with that. And my Arangus fastuosa, I need the pot, is now going into a little orchid top. So we have work to do. Let's get on with it. I just wanted to show you that it is blazing hot in the sun. Okay, I don't put my ceramis into the blazing hot sun because if it's wet, I'll use it. When it dries, it dries, big deal but the warm breeze, etc. This ceramis has now been in that white tray that you see in the back there for several days and it's still wet. I love this stuff, I really do. As much as I want to do my Harpophila, I'm so anxious to get to the Harpophila. I'm gonna do her last because it's organic media and I'm gonna be working all these other orchids with inorganic media and while I move them in and out, it's no problem if I don't have to clean the bowl all the time. Let's see how Fastuosa has been doing since being potted up. I mean, I can see that she's grown this leaf. This new leaf really well. She's starting on a second leaf. So she's doing fabulous from what I can tell from the top. But let us see what the roots are doing inside. And I'm gonna just stick with the ceramis. I'm not putting anything else in. I want the wicking process from the bottom all the way up. All right, the roots are firm, which is fantastic news. So that's great, and we have some growing tips and an extended root right there. That's great. So there's not much to this, I hope. Famous last words, right? Oh, I had lacquer on the bottom. I forgot about that. Look at that. Okay. I forgot I put lacquer on the bottom because it was semi-hydro. Well, well, well. 
let's make sure then to not do that in this case. Here's me saying about the inorganic media, I'm just going to reuse it and I completely forgot I put lecker on the bottom. So I shall be putting this into a plant pot. <laughs> All right, let's make sure to get you back in. The way you were. Just keeping her a little bit lower for now. You see, if her roots were long enough, I would actually just let them go all the way down to the bottom of the orchid top and do a semi-hydro that way with the orchid top. That's the great thing about this. If you have long roots, then just let them all the way to the bottom and fill media up around them. Hopefully one day these roots will just grow down into the bottom of their own accord. And I'm sorry to have disturbed you for the second time in one year. Don't sulk on me now. Just keep growing nicely. There you go. This will be her position. The light will be from here because she's doing what I wanted her to do is to curve up and around so that I'm protecting the roots that are viable and I don't want the weight of the orchid to pull herself out of the pot. One down, four to go. Let's see how that tray fills up. That's perfect. Next up. Osiocladus. Osiocladus spathulifera. This has a, like a succulent growing behavior. And to be honest, I grow it for the leaves. It has not bloomed for me yet, but check out these roots. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? This one is a dud. All the others are fine. Yeah. So the same kind of features, big fleshy, and they remind me of half your pedalum roots. So I'll just leave those on as I'm not 100% sure if they are dead, but I can take this little thing in the back off. These are dead. They are very, look at that. All right, there we go learned something new. I've never assessed the health of the orchid from below because I could see it was fine from above. No signs of stress, no signs of shriveling, and it gives me one growth per year. So we'll see when this one blooms. It is going in one of my secondary pots and I just add a little bit more lecker. Just fiddling with the lecker a bit to get it underneath the loop. going to focus on the orchid being a little bit to the back as that is her growing direction over there. And the same lecker goes back in. 
I need some more. I'm glad to see the roots are doing really well in this setup. Nothing like a little bit of visual confirmation from what you're seeing above. And I think I'm going to need a microfiber across the top until the external roots find their way down. You see I have here two roots coming out of the new growth, but they're quite up on the surface. There's no point trying to fill lecker around that. So, so I'm just going to encourage them to stay where they should go by covering them up. There we go. Next up. Asconopsis, Irene, Dobson, Elmhurst. A mistake. I wanted a dendrobium and they sent me this one and I'm like, okay. Uh, never mind. <laughs> they didn't have my dendrobium. Okay, so I never got that one. Let's see. I like what I'm seeing so far. Look, we have active root growth. That's great. Maybe Irene is going to come into her own now. Finally, and we have scale. Oh no, you don't. Oh no, one year moth larvae. And the next year scale, it's not happening. Don't even think about it. Even though I didn't order her, it doesn't mean there isn't a reason as to why she's with me. I'll just take off the little old roots while we're at it and get her into a nice, clean, shiny pot. Sometimes I take out the really big leckers because that is just pointless for these little orchids. They are not the, the biggest, they need a little bit more smaller stuff around them. There we go. And that is you done. Next up, Spicerianum. Little bit of a squeeze, a squeeze. Let's have a look. Progress, I like it. Look at that. Not too shabby. You see this one was split here, so it died off. But I have nice little growing tips and look, it went all the way down to the bottom of the pot. Look at how those roots have gone and circled the bottom. That's neat. I like that. Take it back to the green and let's see how you get to be positioned in there. Yeah, I'm just going to fill Lekka around her. Yep, yep, yep. I'm not going to bend those roots. See if I were to fill the pot, I would be bending the roots. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to place her down there. They're used to a very wet environment, so we will keep it that way. No loopy doo.
Now for the time being, she looks lower than she is. But as I hold her, I'm shaking and pulling up. Not that much because when they grow a lot of roots, they actually start to lift themselves out of the pot. So we can watch and observe if that happens with Spicerianum. So off camera, I'm picking out a little bit of the smaller Lekka for the top, simply because the bulky ones would make it a bit too airy. So I'll just tease her in into her new location with some smaller Lekka. And job done. Okay, next up. Woohoo! Your turn. I've been waiting for you. Now, if you're wondering what I'm going to do with this, well, I wasn't going to start separating it here. So I'm going to boil this, sterilize it, and then eventually I will pick out all my leka and separate the media one from the other. Harpophila, it is about time. Why did I bring four? Oh, yes. My Leptotus bicolor is still in uh, one of these that I want for my for my Rapiculus labias. But I'm not going to repot her into this. It's too big. Even though it will be inorganic media, it just looks ridiculous. She is such a small plant. I think I'm going to mount my Leptotus. She was mounted. I wasn't happy with the progress. She was a very weak plant when I got her. So yeah, that's what this one is missing because Papafila is going into the Rapiculus setup. Woohoo! Let's get rid of this gunk. You, you, you. Don't like. So she had some sphagnum moss for water retention. But I'm getting these new roots. These are all dead. No, they're not. Look at this. So there was sphagnum moss in there. So this one's gr fine, nice and firm up to there. So she did have something in the pot. This one isn't. This one's firm up to a certain point. Okay, let's take care of this. Big day for Harpophila. I've been waiting, waiting, waiting. She is such a weak plant when I got her. She still is a weak plant, but she's throwing out a nice new growth and that is important with those new roots all right we don't have to go mad it's going in a straight inorganic setup and I'm gonna make some space and I'll be right back so I was thinking of just going the easy route and taking just this to secure her if I need to, which I will, but then I thought, stop it. I've been waiting so long, do it right. Otherwise afterwards, I'll just be annoyed. My plan is obviously not to have to use it long-term, but it's there, it's there if I need it. On the bottom, ceramus, and then layered in between, small lava rock with ceramus. The ceramus, oh wait, 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 let me check where the holes are. Uh-huh. I want my holes to be in the back, and that is where my support is going. That was where my label is going. And that is because I always want to know if I carry these pots around or lift them off the shelf, how to angle them 
so that I don't spill water when they're coming off the shelf. That's why I do this as my reminder and marker. And sometimes based on the media I use, I put in the label straight away so that I'm not jiggling the orchid around while I'm trying to figure that out as well. I just filled a little pot. I think it's going to help me much more when it comes time to fill around her. Come on you. I am certain you will be much happier here. I hope I'm correct in my assumption. Get her positioned so that I don't have to jiggle around too much. And a bit lower in the pot, that's okay. I'll pull her up shortly. Yeah, I'm happy with that. The gardener took the remainder of my sand, which was a shame. I don't know why he would do that. So I'm going to give a little bit more ceramis instead of filling up with sand, which I would much prefer. When the other Repiculus Lelias come, I'll buy some more sand. Right now, I'm not going to pass around. So I'm just patting the pot and pulling my Lelia up very, very carefully. Now I want to tie her before I put the rest on because I have root tips right at the top. And I don't want to be jiggling them on the surface of any kind of rough media. There we go. I will continue with my little superficial spraying regime as I do every morning with her. I will keep that up because I don't want the ceramics to start to dry out because she lives outside and then suddenly they desiccate my roots. That's just not going to happen. But there she is in her new home. And I hope, I hope it's permanent and successful for her. I've been waiting so long. It's been bothering me. I hope we got it right. This is not fertilized RO water. In the morning, she gets like a misting with fertilized water and then late afternoon, I do it again just to keep the surface clean. No buildup. I don't think the roots are ready. So what I'm doing now is just spraying all the way down until I can see some water leaking out of the holes in the back. That means the reservoir is full. And then she goes back in her place. There we go. That looks good to me. I hope it feels good for her. Happy days. Alrighty, one final cleanup. Let's have a look. If it's runoff water like we had, I chuck it away and fill up with fresh. This is fresh RO water. No fertilizer for a day or two. They had plenty. They were established in the pots that we took them out of. There was no need to go overboard. Sometimes it's good to give them all a little bit of a rest as well. So all their prep work prior to the repot with regards to fertilizer has been done. And now for a couple of days, the reservoir will be just RO water. No rhyme or reason, it's just how I do it. There's nothing specific about it. I don't know if it's right or wrong. It's just worked for me well that way. And that's why I've just stuck with it. So this was actually, like I said, all about Repiculus Lelias, yet we only had one to deal with. And if the other Repiculus Lelias that are hopefully going to come are bigger than what I expect with the pots that I want them in, I'm not going to complain. They'll be in pots like this one here. 
I have five of those left, so there's plenty of room. Well, I thank everybody that stuck with me all the way through and watched me do the mundane day-to-day -day things that an orchid maintenance is all about, plus prepping for possible newcomers. If there are any questions, then please let me know in the comments below, including suggestions. I'm always open to suggestions, so thank you ever so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you stay safe and have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.